We have our student athletes from North Dakota State University. Uh, we'll introduce the athletes Tyson Ward, Ding Gu, Jared Samuelson, and Vinny Shahid. We'll start with questions. The first will be here on the right. Uh, hey, fellas, is this now the dream or the nightmare <laughs> scenario for you? We'll start uh, down at the end with Vinny and give everybody a chance to answer. Uh, it's another basketball game. We have 40 minutes. We're going to compete. We plan on winning. Uh, yeah, we're really excited for this opportunity, obviously, to go out and compete and, and play another game. No, yeah, every, every uh, opportunity to play March Madness is still part of the dream. Uh, just come at it like another basketball game, just come ready to compete. What, <laughs> what they said. <laughs> uh, question here on the left, about midway back on the left. Josh Swanson, KFGO Fargo. Guys, you're 5-0 and in March. What is it about this month where you seemingly figured it out and are playing such good basketball? Start with Tyson and go down the other way. Uh, you know, every, every game is a, you know, a big game. Uh, no matter who you're playing against, you know, 40 minutes are up on the clock and, you know, it's a, you don't want to go home. And you put that in your mind and you put it in the game plan. You don't want to go home. Uh, you just set your jaw and get ready for a good game. Uh, I think it's probably just the uh, winner go home factor uh, brings out competitiveness and everybody's just uh, playing to the best of their ability. Yeah, we're just playing um, our best basketball right now, which obviously is what you want in late March. So um, hopefully we can keep that up. I think we're doing a really good job of hammering the details and uh, really staying in the moment. Um, March is obviously a fun time of the year. Uh, and you can see our guys are having fun playing in the playing the game in the the month of March. Third row here on the right. Uh, Tyson, growing up in the southeast, did you watch Duke a lot growing up? And and you know, one of those kids who always want to be a Blue Devil. Uh, I mean, I, you know, they're always on TV, and you know, it's always a good game to watch. You know, they always have a great competition, great team. Um, to say, uh, I've always. It, I mean, wherever I could go, whoever gave me the opportunity to play was going to be the place where I'd be, and North Dakota State was that place to be. Can I follow? You, yes, and sir. So how do you put that aside and, and just try, try to treat them like another team then? Just just exactly like you said, just treat them as another team. Uh, you know, it's 40 minutes on the clock. You know, it's 0-0. Zero, zero, uh, ball's tipped, and you just play basketball, do something that you've been doing for your whole life. Third row here on the left. Tyson, can you speak to Sam Greasel's growth this year? Uh, you know, true freshman coming in and has improved seemingly throughout the season. Can you talk a little bit to that? Uh, he's been big time. Uh, you can you can tell he's been in the gym a lot this year. Uh, a couple of the guys have taken him into the gym personally and just hammered some things with him. And he he's willing to listen and get better and do everything it takes to you know help this team out. And you know it's a true testament to what he's been doing and on and off the court. And you can see that it's been reflecting into this late March, and he's been playing real well. On the right side, uh, Vinny, can you just take us through your travel the last couple of days? Is normal or has it been a little bit hectic? Uh, you know, it's travel. Uh, there were some late nights. Um, definitely not an excuse for tomorrow when the ball tips up. Um, it's definitely a little different for us, but there's definitely no excuse there. Uh, last night. We'll stay here on the right side. Uh, Dang, how do you try to match up with Williamson, you know, just his sheer size? Uh, I think just come out and compete, you know. Uh, just don't know what's going to happen, but you just go out and just play as hard as you can at the end and just see what, what happens. Here on the left. Uh, this question's for Vinny. Vinny, a lot has been made that not a lot was expected of this team going into the season. What was your guys' expectation as a team meeting in fall ball? Was it to be here in March Madness? Definitely. Um, I think we saw this plan uh, at the beginning of June uh, when we came together as a family. We saw this happening, and uh, through the ups and downs, you know, many people were like, they're too young, uh, they can't do this. But I, I think our locker room stayed together, and uh, we definitely 
kept our mind on the goal at stake was to get here to March Madness, and not only to get here, but to win some games. The uh, third row here in the middle. Have any, has there been any, I know you guys have said it's just another game, but has there been any talk at all in the locker room or from the coaches? I mean, you know, uh, you're going to face Coach Krzyzewski tomorrow. You're going to face Duke. Bill Raftery and Jim Nance are out there calling the game. Has there been any talk at all of, of the bright lights and the, the focus? Uh, you know, we're aware. We're human. I mean, anybody that doesn't think about it or tells you that they don't think about it, it they're, they're lying to you because we're human and we do think about it. But um, at the end of the day, like Tyson said earlier, when the ball goes up and it tips, it's something we've all been doing our whole lives. It's 40 minutes, it goes on the clock, and it's a basketball game. Uh, second row here on the left. This one's for Tyson. Tyson, just take us through the experience so far of, you know, going through the selection Sunday, traveling to Dayton, now here in Columbia. What's the experience been like for you so far? It's, it's every college basketball player's dream. Uh, you know, when you, you put in a lot of work uh, from when you're a young kid, and you, you fill out your brackets, and you're like, man, I really want to be on a team that to play in the NCAA tournament and win some games. You know, it's a dream come true. And, you know, it's just been surreal uh, sharing this moment with these guys and just being able to live in the moment. It's just been great and a great opportunity. And I've been blessed to, we've been blessed to share this journey. We'll stay here on the left side. Tyson, can you speak a little bit to the, uh, the job that Coach Richmond has done this year? Um, again, these guys have touched on the, the expectations, maybe weren't high to start the season, but you're playing your best ball now. So what has Coach Richmond done to get you to this point? Uh, you know, he's been doing the same thing, uh, just getting us better in every practice, making sure that, you know, we're making our weights with, with Coach Miller and, you know, just doing the little things because that's what he really keeps us to really think about, you know, the little things that, the things that have gotten us here. Uh, you know, just constantly hammering on us, like, hey, defense, 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 defense. Um, you know, just little things. That, that's really all I can say is just the, the hammering the little things. Second row on the left. Jared, uh, what's, what's this been, team's mentality been like shooting from beyond the, beyond the arc, just the ability to hit three-pointers and, you know, on Dayton able to get to the rim and space the floor? How has that been an attribute here in the last couple of games? Yeah, shot selection is big for us on offense. Um, and we're confident shooters out there. We, we've been working in the gym and stuff like that. And uh, we have confidence in ourselves, and that's how, you know, you become a good shooter. And so, um, you know, we've been get, doing a good job of sharing the ball, uh, you know, setting each other up, and, you know, just got to rise up and knock it down. On the right side. Uh, dang, your season, uh, the international experience, can you sum it up a little bit in the last several months? Um, I mean, this summer I got the opportunity to compete for the Uganda national team on uh, the FIBA World Cup qualifiers. Uh, it was a great experience, you know, just going out there, uh, meeting new people, and just getting a taste of professional basketball. And I think it really helped me this uh, season with confidence and just uh, slowing down the game. Any more questions for our student athletes? Just a follow. Did you face anybody of the caliber of what you, you might be able to might be seeing tomorrow in, in the in the tournament? Uh, yeah, there was a couple NBA guys on the Nigeria team, uh, but obviously Duke has some uh, really uh, good talent. So, I think so. Any more questions? Thank you, gentlemen.
North Dakota State head coach David Richmond, uh, opening statement, and then uh, we'll open the floor for questions. A few more people here than uh, Dayton the other day. <laughs> um, obviously, we're extremely excited to be here. Uh, unbelievable opportunity and unbelievable challenge for us tomorrow night. And we stress to the guys, to, you know, along the way, going back to the Thursday before we left for the Summer League tournament, that make sure you embrace this journey. We talked about that all year, but make sure you stay in the moment and uh, enjoy this along the way. But also come 7:10 tomorrow night, be ready to compete. And obviously against a, a team, I don't know if that I need really to explain. I mean, the, you know, Duke is Duke. Um, Coach K is Coach K, and the success that he's had. Um, a lot of challenges, a lot of just great opportunities for us, and we'll be excited and ready to compete tomorrow night. Start the first question here in the third row. Please address yourself there, Mike. Mike McFeely from yeah. the Forum in Fargo. Yeah. Yeah. Dave. Thanks. Y you're a guy that's, that spent almost your entire life in North Dakota. I think you went to Northern Iowa for a, for a little bit. Um, and tomorrow night you're going to be coaching uh, against Coach Krzyzewski on the biggest stage. Can you just put that in perspective, what that means for a North Dakota kid? It's obviously really, really, really cool. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you are who you are because of your roots. And, um, you know, I was raised by two wonderful people, uh, my mom and dad, John and Marcia, and my sister, a great family that really is the core of who I am. Uh, and again, hopefully who I am is the, you know, a guy of, <clears throat> excuse me, a tremendous virtue. Um, but to be on this stage you know, tomorrow night, CBS, uh, to coach against, a, a, obviously, a Hall of Famer, a legend, um, I, I don't know if I could have dreamt this, Mike, uh, a couple years ago. Are you ready for it? Absolutely. I mean, it, ready or not, here it comes. And, and so um, with a great challenge, becomes a great opportunity, and uh, certainly I'm going to be ready for it, and I know our guys will as well. Have you had a chance to talk to Coach Krzyzewski? I have not had a chance to talk to Coach. Just pass the mic up. Thank you. Hey, I, I'm just curious. When you go up in a matchup like this against a team with you know future NBA players, a guy like Zion who's obviously taken over college basketball, do you, as a coach, kind of view this as as a a stressful, challenging situation or something you're excited about? How do I how do I scheme against these guys? How do I make this come together? Coach Miles, the guy who I started working with, said, you know, when he left college, he got into college coaching because of the environment and the experience of college, and so. I get the narrative about stress and all this, but this is fun. You think about it. We get to we get to play college basketball. We get to coach college basketball, um, and so I, I think maybe if there was any pressure, it was the other night, Wednesday night in Dayton, for some of our guys to just experience that. But that's gone away, and we're all excited for the opportunity. On the right side, uh, Dave, uh, facing Duke. Uh, I think Benny sort of addresses saying we're human, but. On your end, any fear of uh, deer in the headlights with your guys, a team with no seniors? You know, I, I think it was just thinking about that. They don't have any seniors either. <laughs> um, uh, I really, again, I think we just kind of addressed that in the last question a little bit. I think some of that deer in headlights, I did see a little bit of that the other night against a really good North Carolina Central team. And I think some of that's gone. Um, you, you, I mean, we expect a lot of pressure from Duke. We um, expect them to come out, teed up, ready to go like the number one seed would, um, and, and we'll see. But I think it's, it's important, like we've stressed to them all along, the quicker you can figure out you're doing something that you've done your entire life, uh, the quicker your chances of success will be. Coach, you're on the left side. Coach, whether it's at a, a shoot-around or even having the guys on stage before you came up, there's a certain chemistry and camaraderie among the guys. Was that something that was present from the start of the season? Did it develop throughout the season? And what was Vinny's role in all of that? Yeah, I was thinking about that, uh, Josh. It, it really has, and it really went back to about May, early June, when our guys went on, a, uh, on an FCS, like, week-long deal in the Twin Cities and really formed a great bond. There was um, a great bunch of eight guys that stuck around, you know, in the spring and had a tremendous spring. And then they welcomed and embraced those six new guys with open arms. And... Uh, for a guy like Vinny to come in and, and to be named captain five, six, couple months, uh, five, six weeks, maybe a couple months into it is, is pretty darn neat. And, but you can see his personality. You can see his smile. You can see his um, sense for the moment that, that a, his guys embrace him and he embraces them real quick. Here in the middle, coach. What changes have you seen in Sam Greasel throughout the year, Dave, from the start of the year, true freshman up until la last night, I guess? I think the biggest, one of the, one of the biggest things with Sam is, is Vinny. 
um, and it, it makes more sense to me when, you, when you're there at 6 a.m. in the morning for lifting sessions and just different things where Vinny just breeds confidence in everybody, myself included. And when we were able to get Sam in late May, we knew we had something really special. That's a young man that looks the part, um, just attacks his, his job, you know, with, 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 uh, with great resolve every day. He's been more invested, you know, in the weight room and the diet and those things than I anticipated. Um, but I think you could see from the moment we started him that, that he was going to be pretty good. And then he had that injury. And, and I think it was really telling when he came back in that Omaha game that he didn't play great, but he didn't play with fear. And you think about it sitting there with five, six weeks with a knee injury like that, he could have been hesitant. But he's growing. He's, he's come out of his shell a little bit socially and been, been more comfortable uh, getting outward. And I think a big part of that is Vinny and, and his teammates just breeding confidence into him all the time. Coach. Here on the left side. You played Gonzaga as a number one team in Spokane in late November. Do you use that game as a template at all coming into this game, at least from mindset point of view? Maybe the first 10 minutes, that's it. <laughs> um, you know, we had a lot of other extenuating circumstances at the time. Um, some tough travel. Uh, Sam was out. It's a game where Cameron got hurt. Um, but, but also, I, I think it, it showed us that, you know, for the first 10 minutes when we were locked in and um, able and fresh, so to speak, um, we can compete, and, but we know that we're a different team. The Duke's obviously got more experience now uh, than, the, than they did at that time of the year, like Gonzaga would this time of year. Um, but there's certainly some things, hopefully, that we can lean on. Dave, uh, how much did Dayton, the first four game, help just kind of get the taste in the mouth of your team and understanding what an NCAA tournament atmosphere is like? Yeah, uh, I'm hoping it helped a lot. You know, I saw some things that, you, again, I've said it all along about this group. This is an experience group. What I mean by that is, is you can talk to them about an experience, you can show them experience, and they don't quite get it until they actually live the experience. And Wednesday night was them living the experience. And so hopefully that will you know, help us relax, get that deer in headlights out of us, so to speak, early in the game. Coach, on the right side. Uh, Dave, who's the toughest guy on your team to say, let's just play basketball, let's just go out there and play a game? Jared Samuelson. No hesitation. Um, if you go into our video room, there's a big sign that talks about being tough and together. That Jared Samuelson is tough and he's together. His teammates love him. Um, and you really got something in a huddle. Jared doesn't say, he doesn't say much at all. But when, when you get into some of those moments, you go back to Santa Barbara um, at, at home. You go back to the other night, last night. Uh, when he's teed up and, and he's locked in, it, it's pretty cool because his teammates really embrace that. And it starts with his toughness. On the left side. A follow up on that, Dave. We, we like to talk about Jared's three point ability, but how about his ability to take some charges and, you know, a small sky out there and he's diving on the floor, getting burns. Just talk about his tenacity defensively. Yeah, I think, I think that's the beauty of March, right? If you flipped open a dictionary and you look for a Division I basketball player, Jared Samuelson's probably not the first guy that shows up. But what you can't measure is somebody's heart. What you can't measure is, you know, someone's basketball IQ. Um, and from the time you saw Jared at, at a camp three, three or four summers ago until today, in, in a sense, it's really not surprising. You know, it's, he's a guy that we talk about setting our jaw and just competing. Jared sets his jaw every day, not just, the, not just in games, but in, in practice and in film sessions. He's at the edge of his seat. And, and a kid that we couldn't hide uh, more his first or second year trying to guard the ball, now he's guarding the, guys, the, the opponent's best uh, perimeter guy. It's a pretty neat deal. Coach, maybe the, the biggest game in the, the history of North Dakota as far as the sporting event with so many eyeballs back home watching on CBS tomorrow night. What would be your message to the, the people back home who are turning in and maybe seeing the Bison for the first time this year? Hope, hopefully we, re, re, we represent the people back home. And North Dakota is a great state. Um, and I like to say this, it's a state that for three, four months out of the year gets really cold. Um, but that keeps the riffraff out, and, and it adds some toughness. And, and I think what you'll see tomorrow, and I think what you've seen the last pack, back of the year when we've got some experience on these guys is, is a blue-collar mentality. In, in Fargo, Fargo, North Dakota, West Fargo, the Red River Valley, Moorhead, the, the state of North Dakota, um, there's some tremendous people uh, with great resolve and toughness, and hopefully that's what the, this Bison men's basketball team looks like as well. Anything Thank else you. for Coach? Thank you. Thank you.